Now next topic is cisterna cali. This topic is from the chapter posterior abdominal wall. Cisterna cali. It is the elongated lymphatic sac. This is the cisterna cali, which is the elongated lymphatic sac. It collects the limb and dimensions. It is about five to seven centimeters long. This is present in front of the first and the second lumbar vertebra. Behind it is present the first and the second lumbar vertebra. and this is present to the right of the abdominal aorta this is arch of aorta descending abdomen descending thoracic aorta this is diaphragm this is the aortic opening of the diaphragm and this is the abdominal aorta and this is present cisterna cali which is the sac lymphatic sac 5 to 7 cm long it is present to the right of the abdominal aorta and this is overlapped by the this is overlapped see here it is hidden by the right cross of the diaphragm so it is overlapped by the right cross of the diaphragm and its upper end its upper end its beginning is from here then it continues upward and its upper end is continuous with the thoracic duct when it continues above it it runs from the aortic opening of the diaphragm it runs upward and continues as the thoracic duct then it is joined by the right and left lumbar and intestinal lymph trunks this this duct is also joined by the this sac is also joined joined by the right and the left intestinal lymphatic trunks the lumbar trunks they arise from the lateral aortic nodes and bring lymph from the lower limb pelvic viscera kidney suprarenal gland the testes ovaries and the deeper part of the abdominal wall and the intestinal intestine intestinal trunk it brings lymph from the stomach intestine pancreas spleen and the anterior in, in, anterior inferior part of the liver this cisterna cali when it passes from the aortic opening of the diaphragm it ascends upward and it is continued as the thoracic duct so thoracic duct duct as you have done in the thorax thoracic duct it begins from the superior aspect of the cisterna cali so continuation of the cisterna cali is the thoracic duct whole of the lymph which is collected into the cisterna cali it is transported to the thoracic duct and it passes through the this thoracic duct it passes through the aortic opening of the diaphragm then this thoracic duct it ascends upward upward first is first it passes through the aortic opening of the diaphragm the length of the duct is about 38 to 45 cm after that it passes into the posterior mediastinum then it passes into the superior mediastinum in its whole of the course it is towards the right of the vertebral column and it goes upwards to the level of the clavicle then see here at the level of the clavicle at the level of the clavicle it descends it descends and opens into the junction of the subclavian and the interjugular vein next topic is celiac ganglion and the celiac plexus this topic is also from the posterior abdominal wall first of all celiac ganglion this is the aorta abdominal aorta it has three main branches this is the celiac trunk superior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery now celiac ganglion celiac ganglion this is the largest ganglion in the body situated on either side of the celiac trunk this is celiac trunk on either side of the celiac trunk the largest ganglion is called the celiac ganglion and each ganglion is irregular in shape and is usually divided into upper part and the lower part the upper part it receives the greatest splanchnic nerves and the lower part receives the lesser splanchnic nerves next is the celiac plexus or the solar plexus celiac plexus or solar plexus it is also closely related to the celiac ganglion this is these are this is a celiac ganglion with the celiac ganglion closely related is the celiac plexus this is this network of the nerve is a celiac plexus it is closely to, related to the celiac ganglion the plexus is situated on the aorta this is present on the aorta around the celiac trunk and around the root of the superior mesenteric artery so this plexus celiac plexus or the solar plexus it is closely related to the celiac ganglion on both the side is a celiac ganglion and celiac plexus is related to the celiac ganglion and it is situated on the aorta this plexus is situated on the aorta and also around the celiac trunk and around the root of the superior mesenteric artery the plexus extends to the crust of the 
diaphragm and it is overlapped by the inferior vena cava and by the pancreas this is overlapped by the inferior vena cava and the here is the pancreas so this is overlapped by the pancreas the fibers making up the plexus are the fibers are preganglionic they are the preganglionic sympathetic fibers through which reach it through the greater and the lesser splanchnic nerves then are the postganglionic sympathetic fibers which are rising in the celiac ganglion and the preganglionic vagal fibers which are derived from the posterior vagal trunk contained fibers from both the right and the left vagal nerves and the sensory fibers from the diaphragm reach the celiac plexus along the inferior phrenic artery so this is the this is all about the celiac ganglion and the celiac plexus next are the branches of the celiac plexus the celiac plexus it forms number of secondary plexus which surround branches of the aorta first is the phrenic plexus phrenic plexus it will supply to the diaphragm next is the hepatic plexus which distributes is distributed to the liver gallbladder and the bile duct third is the gastric plexus which passes to the stomach then is the fourth is splenic plexus which supply the vessels and the smooth muscles of the spleen then is the suprarenal plexus it contains the fibers which will supply the suprarenal glands next is renal plexus renal plexus the fibers of this will supply the kidney and the upper part of the ureter then the testicular plexus it will supply testes epididymis and the vas deferens then ovarian plexus it will supply the ovaries and the uterine tube the superior mesenteric plexus contains the superior mesenteric ganglion and supplies the territory of the superior mesenteric artery then the abdominal aortic plexus or intermediate plexus it is formed by the celiac plexus and the filaments from the first and the second lumbar splanchnic nerve it is situated on the sides and the front of aorta between the origin of the superior and the inferior mesenteric artery and it is continuous above with the celiac plexus and below with the superior hypogastric plexus and its branches form a part of the testicular then are the inferior mesenteric iliac and the superior hypogastric plexus and supply the inferior vena cava last is the inferior mesenteric plexus the inferior mesenteric plexus is situated chiefly it is formed chiefly by the fibers from the aortic plexus and it is distributed to the territory of the inferior mesenteric artery next topic is common iliac artery then is the external iliac artery and the internal iliac artery these topics they are also from the chapter posterior abdominal wall this is the abdominal aorta when the aorta it pierces the aortic opening of the diaphragm it comes into the abdomen then it is named as the abdominal aorta this is the abdominal aorta from the level of it is from the level of t12 to l4 then at the level of l4 it divides into the common iliac arteries and the abdominal aorta it has three main branches this is the celiac trunk then superior mesenteric then is the inferior mesenteric we have all discussed this now today common iliac arteries these are the terminal branches terminal means ending branches of the abdominal aorta are the common iliac arteries beginning in front of the vertebra l4 so abdominal aorta is at the up to the level of l4 at the level of l4 abdominal aorta divides into two common iliac arteries and 1.25 cm to the left of the median plane it is towards the towards the left of the median plane it's it is more curved towards the left side on each side it passes downward and medially and ends in front of the sacroiliac joint so this common iliac artery it runs up to the sacroiliac joint this level is the sacroiliac joint and at the level of the lumbosacral intervertebral disc by dividing into external and the internal iliac artery so the aorta abdominal aorta from the level of t12 to l4 then at the level of l4 aorta divides into common iliac arteries then this both of the arteries run up to the sacroiliac joint sacroiliac joint is the meeting point of the sacrum and the ilium then at that point the this common iliac artery it runs up to the sacroiliac joint then at that point it will divide to external iliac and the internal iliac artery 
then this external iliac artery it will cross the inguinal ligament and will continue as the femoral artery for the course of the femoral artery and all course in the in the lobal limb we have already done this then the internal iliac artery it will run inside the pelvis this region is pelvis and it will supply the and this artery this artery it will run into the into the pelvis and will supply the pelvic organs this this is the right common iliac artery this is the left common iliac artery the right common iliac artery passes in front of the commencement of the inferior vena cava here is the inferior vena cava so it will pass above the inferior vena cava and the right common iliac artery is posterior to the vena cava above and medial to it below then is the left this is the left side left common iliac artery it is shorter as compared to the right it is crossed at its middle by the inferior mesenteric vessels and the left common iliac vein is medial to the artery and the structures lying on the left are the ala of the sacrum sympathetic trunk lumbosympathetic trunk iliolumbar artery and the obturator nerve they are present due to it